So basically, as a young child, I have seven older brothers, six older brothers, rather, and we would sell fruits and vegetables in the Bahamas in the store market, and also we'd sell these cookies called mini packs. And so from a very young age, I saw how um, business and economics really impacted people's lives. And so for me, you know, a part of my passion for economics is personal. And certainly for inequality, like being uh, growing up in a single parent home, like I saw how important it was for you know people coming from disadvantaged backgrounds to have um, economic opportunities. In terms of my intellectual path, so I'm more of a physicist by training. So I did my undergrad in math and physics at Duke University, and I minored in economics. And in the background of all of that was this desire to do theoretical economic modeling. And so I thought I learned physics so that I can know how to do models because you look at models of the natural universe. And then I would learn economics because, well, I want to model economic systems. And after finishing up at Duke, I started my PhD in physics at Harvard where I was doing um, theoretical particle physics. And the dime dropped when I was sitting in one of my quantum mechanics courses and we were studying magnetism. And basically, one of the predictions of this model of magnetism is that you can get a system in which you have what looks similar to like a segregated neighborhood, where all of the spins in, in the electron, all of the spins in the magnet, some are pointing up and some are pointing down, and it's completely segregated based on which ones are pointing up and down. And I thought, wow, this looks like what happens in segregation, where you have this kind of other side of the tracks phenomena. And that started this kind of an odyssey while I was at Harvard where I started to hang out with more economists and sociologists to learn more about segregation. And they started to point me to some papers that actually um, Stephen Durlach and, and Brock had written on this topic, looking at how social interactions can affect people's behavior if they have utility for conforming. And at some point, I got so engrossed in trying to understand this literature and trying to understand how I can use my model building tools to, to, to contribute to the sector that I realized that I would need to, to pivot from physics and go directly into economics. And so from there, I went to the Wharton School where I'm currently doing my PhD in applied economics. And one of the things that I do study actually is residential segregation in the US housing market. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the main themes that comes across is measurement and how important it is for us to think about the issue of measurement and how the way in which we think about measurement is influenced by the questions that we want to ask. So I think that that was something that came across in a, in a very important way. I think the other thing that, that came across very significantly too is thinking about how the models that we have actually can explain phenomena that we care about. And I, I certainly benefited a lot from um, Professor Durlaff's um, exposition of social interaction models. And it's like every time I hear him give that talk, there are new ideas that are popping up in my head. And the final thing that I would say too is, as a, as a junior researcher in this field, I benefited a lot from the mentorship of the senior professors here, who in many ways really welcome the questions that I have. They welcome me personally. They'll pull me aside and give me some important professional advice about pre-doctoral programs, about programs that I can apply for while I'm a doctoral student, about things I should be looking at for preparation once I would have finished my PhD. So it's, it's this combination of things that directly impact the way that I think about my research. And then there are also these um, more informal things about what I should be doing from a professional development standpoint that's very unique about this kind of a setting where you have very senior professors all the way down to graduate students like me. I think, you know, to your point, these kinds of interactions are so important because it also makes you feel like you're a part of a family. Because as a researcher, you're going to spend so much time doing your work. And so first, you want to pick a topic that you're going to be interested in. And I think knowing that your research is valued by the community of scholars who have similar interests is very affirming. And you look forward to hearing about their work. And you also look forward to seeing them from a social perspective. To your question about what are some of the opportunities that are available to um, young students, I think a key one would be the summer school on socioeconomic inequality. Uh, this is a workshop that was organized by Professor Durlaff from the University of Wisconsin at Madison and also Professor Heckman from here at the University of Chicago. And last year was the first iteration of the program and it was phenomenal. It was a lot of work. We would be up from 8 o'clock in the morning until maybe 7 <laughs> or <laughs> 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. But I think each person who came and participated 
got so much out of the lectures that were there. We got so much out of the questions that each other asked. We got so much out of the, the relationships that we built in the course of that week that those kinds of opportunities, I would definitely encourage people with an interest in economics and particularly with an interest in inequality to consider applying for that summer school and other summer schools. A second thing to really consider is building strong relationships with faculty members and with senior graduate students because there's so much that comes in terms of mentorship in the context of those vertical relationships that is just tremendously invaluable. And I say that from personal experience. That's a great question. I think one of the things that's very compelling about economics is just the breadth of economics as a, as a discipline. You have very seminal researchers like Gary Becker who really helped the economics profession to look at non-traditional domains of study. Studies, for example, crime, marriage markets. Um, economists touch so many different aspects of society from labor, labor market outcomes, to discrimination, what's happening in the macro economy. And so I think to the extent that you have a passion for any particular area, economics really is a set of tools that allows you to frame up questions in a way that can give you answers to those questions, right? And in particular, that can delineate what are some causal mechanisms. Does X cause Y? Does discrimination cause the income inequality that we see in the US? And so one of the key things to bring to the table really is a passion for whatever it is that you want to do. And I think about economics really as a set of tools for seeing that passion reflected in your work. Again, because the endeavor of being a graduate student is so um, time consuming that having something that you're passionate to work on is such a key part of it. And I think also too that passion and that life experience lends a certain degree of intuition to the kinds of models that you build. I wanted to say uh, one other thing too about being at conferences like this. I think it helps to demystify the process of research a lot because oftentimes you would have um, senior professors who would come here for the purpose of presenting work that is in process. And so they want feedback. They want to hear what their colleagues think. And they would say, this is preliminary. We haven't modeled this yet, but we want to model this. And so you begin to see the creative process as it's developing. And that's very reassuring because as a student, oftentimes we would read their work once it's completed. And this may have taken them years and years, and we think, wow, like I have to produce this in a couple of months. And so coming to a conference like this really helps us to see that even for you know, the most accomplished and successful economists, that the working process really is a, a process. And so we can just submit to that process, maybe be a little less um, strenuous on ourselves, and enjoy the relationships that we build in the process of doing the research work too. I would say that it's a, it's a very open field in the sense that I felt very welcomed into the economics community. I felt you know, especially welcomed at the summer school last year at Chicago. And I remember walking away just, just being like, wow, you know, I'm sitting in this room with all of these really brilliant students from across the US and even from institutions um, in the UK and other parts of the world. And there was just such a freedom to ask any question that you wanted to ask. And you're talking about you know, faculty that you respect a whole lot. And so that felt very empowering. So I, I would just want to say that. Because sometimes you know, the profession can seem a little bit intimidating. And I also want to say, too, that when it comes down to studying specific questions, such as inequality, you know, your personal experience matters a lot. So if you're coming from a, a, a neighborhood or an experience that was disadvantaged, that could inform your work in a very significant way. And so economics is a really neat field in that my experiences selling you know, cookies, selling fruits and vegetables in, in the Bahamas, being in neighborhoods where you had some friends who were just as wonderful and just as talented as me, but for whatever reason, you know, their outcomes ended up being differently. I can then come to the table and like really bring those perspectives to the table. And so I definitely would like to encourage people, especially from who may not traditionally see themselves as being economists or see themselves as being cut out for, for that particular field, to consider giving economics a try because their perspectives can inform their work and inform the way that the discipline thinks about specific research agendas in very important ways. So we need those voices at the table and certainly in increasing measure.